Hey, Dr. LeGrand here. Welcome to my channel where we bring you videos on intermittent fasting, fasting, and other things pertaining to health, such as detoxification or other health issues and concerns that you guys might want to ask about. So if this is your first time on my channel, consider subscribing. In this video, I'm going to talk about an interesting study that actually was just released this uh, past spring and summer that is kind of on the horizon of that actually benefits uh, about intermittent fasting, a little bit more research, and that is great. So let's go ahead and dive in about this study. Now this study, it is a pilot study, and what that means is it's kind of on a trial basis. It's not like where it doesn't have a big sample size, but at least has some interesting uh, points and findings that they found on this pilot study. So it's definitely a very small sample size that they used but it does tell us some information, but the pilot study really just kind of indicates kind of a trial basis. That's what a pilot study is. But this pilot study was done at the University of Alabama by the Department of Nutritional Sciences. And this study consisted of eight uh, men that were pre-diabetic, and they had them do two different things. They had them do a, what they called as an early um, time restricted fasting, and then they also had them eat in, in within a 12 hour span. So this is the first time that they've actually done a early time uh, restricted fasting. And what that means is that basically they have them eat earlier in the day versus later in the day. And then they found some benefits from that. And I'm gonna kind of discuss that here in a minute. But that's kind of the difference is that they actually ate within a six hour time frame by starting having breakfast by eight o'clock and then having their last meal by two or three, depending on what time they had their breakfast. But really that's kind of what that means is the early time of restricted fasting. And then they also, uh, they had them do that for about five to six weeks. And then they had them also eat within a 12 hour span and did that also for about another five weeks and was able to see different results in those two things. And what they first initially found, besides just losing the weight that a lot of intermittent fasting talks about, I mean, sure, it increased it, you know, the amount of ketones and fatty acids that were breaking down to be able to do that to lose the weight, but that wasn't their ultimate goal. They wanted to see if intermittent fasting had some other health benefits that applied. And what they found in this study is that they were able to improve their insulin sensitivity. And they were able to find this by having them eat at an earlier time and also restrict their time frame by eating within six hours. But not only in that, they're also their pancreas, uh, their beta cells improved, which the beta cells has to do with our insulin that creates the insulin, but improved that as well to be able to really respond to high sugar levels. So for people who are pre-diabetic, they're already dealing with sugar issues, sugar levels. This helped them have, improve their sugar levels by eating in that early time restricted time frame, versus when they were eating in a 12 hour time frame. And Keep in mind, they were actually in this study, they were eating all the same things. So their diet wasn't any kind of like restricted, but they ate the same foods, both in the early time restricted time frame and also in the 12 hour span. But they found that by eating in an earlier time frame and also restricted, they were able to improve their blood sugar levels. The other thing that they found is that their blood pressure was decreased. Also oxidative stress was decreased and they were able to decrease their appetite at night which was you know, kind of interesting, especially since they ate in an earlier time, but they found at night, even though their last meal was at three o'clock, they were not as hungry. And so they were able to uh, not have that appetite at night. And so one of these people that did this study was uh, Dr. Peterson, and she kind of talks about um, the importance that this is a big a new way to kind of pave a way for intermittent fasting to be able to do further studying. And it also is kind of one of the first studies that really are kind of utilizing using humans versus a lot of the other intermittent fasting studies that are out there that are done with mice and rats that sure is great information, but it's nice to kind of see information that actually was done with humans. And so this is kind of first way, but it also even opens the first study that actually really looks at other benefits that fast intermittent fasting can do versus just looking at it as you know, another weight loss kind of program. And so that's great to kind of see these uh, improvements. But the thing that uh, Dr. Peterson actually talks about is that the uh, circadian system, and what that means is that's why they kind of did this early time restricted fasting is 
by eating based off of your own circadian rhythm. And so people kind of talk about that where you're kind of biological clock and by eating when your biological clock is set. And this idea around the circadian system is that they found that blood sugar levels actually are better and that our uh, pancreas actually kind of regulates blood sugar levels better when we eat within our circadian system. And so they, their belief is that you can actually, it's better to eat your meals at an earlier time versus late at night. And we've kind of heard this back and forth battle that, you know, eating later at night is better for losing weight or eating early morning, make sure you get your breakfast. There's this, been this back and forth fight. And, but this does shed some light of some interesting effects that maybe eating at an earlier time frame is better than eating at a lighter, later time frame when you're doing intermittent fasting. I'm curious what you guys think. Um, this is just some new information that you know, it's just a pilot study, very small sample size. So really it'd be interesting to kind of see what the future kind of brings us for research on this information. But I'm curious what you guys think about this study. And so just uh, leave some comments in the comment section below. And again, if this is your first time uh, on our channel, consider subscribing, go ahead and like and share our uh, YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, again, leave those comments in the comment section below. But until next time, this is Dr. Legrand talking about all things pertaining to intermittent fasting, fasting detoxification. Dr. Legrand out. Thanks. Bye.